So today we are going to be creating an animation that showcases a specific feature of a product. And the product is the microphone. Let's get started straight away. I'm already in a scene. Uh, you might recognize this from the lighting tutorial, which we did before, uh, lighting in 100 seconds. And then you get this beautiful lighting setup. Now, what I'm going to do is first bring in ship A, empty. Let's bring in a sphere. I'm going to bring this upwards ever so slightly because I wanted to start from the cardioid area. Then I'm going to select this camera, select this one last, control P, object, keep transformed. And then I'm going to select this and we want to zoom out of this. So let's do that. Go to the very first frame. Let's scale in. I believe if I remember correctly, we are moving like this. So it would be nice if we can continue that motion. Uh, so I'm simply going to add an image right here in the camera of the previous render. So I'm going to select our empty and align it somewhat with the other, the other part. So we're going to select this empty, press I, go to frame 49 because I want it to be two seconds. And now we're just going to rotate it out and uh, we also want to scale it so that it becomes visible in a better manner and press I. And next up, it should probably be halted right over here. And then we're going to zoom in and show the backside but there is no background here. So uh, we have a choice, we have a choice. We can either move the camera just a little bit like this perhaps, press I, and the rest we're going to be doing with the empty of the microphone. So select the microphone, keep it at frame 49, press I. Then let's go to frame whatever it was, what was it, 100. Let's turn off the image from the camera by the way, it's annoying me like so, uh, frame 100. And now this one can be rotated on the RYY and it could come slightly closer. Press I and press I on this empty. What do we have now in total? So it's zooming out. Ooh. Then it's moving into the backside, showing the back. And what am I going to do? I'm simply going to add our previous setup for the cardioid with the interlocking waves that we did in the previous tutorial. And I'm going to change some things to it. And the things that I changed, quite simple. I went right over here. And usually we had a curve line plugged into this, which gives us this. But what I did this time is chip A, curve, Bessier. And now we get a Bessier curve right there. And then I shift click on this one, go to the modifiers and set this to and click on copy to select it. So now this Bessier curve has the same properties. Why does this matter? Well, I'm going to plug the group input into the curve of the resample curve. And this means that whatever we drew, look at this, we have the Bessier curve. Whatever we drew is going to be shown right here. That also means that if we click on the drawing tool right here and draw something, that our curve is going to look like that. I think that we can now use this for something useful right over there. Now, we have sound waves coming in here. So let's go into edit mode. Let's draw this up and going out. That looks beautiful. I think it's near done. Now, we might have to play around with a couple of these settings. So this is what I did. Let me just remove it so we can do it again. Uh, all right, so this is the original setup. Uh, we have the X in the X. Uh, we can also try the Z for example, because in this case, that makes a bit more sense. Now, what we can also do is use a spline parameter to decide where the zero and the one is. I'm going to show you exactly what that means because it might sound like voodoo, which it honestly is. Uh, so if we place the factor of the spline parameter into the selection, of the set position. And then what will happen? Absolutely nothing, but it becomes clear. Once you play around with the wave frequencies, what's going on? This area specifically right here is stuck. I'm going to undo this and now watch what happens with this. All right, it's going all over the place. But if we plug the factor into the selection of the set position, what happens? Ah, at least those dots are going to stand still. So now basically all we want to do is make this stronger because I want the waves to hit the microphone. And in order to show that the microphone kills the sound, we're going to kill the wave. So I'm going to add a map range note, map range note right over there and play around with these values. So 
now this area is becoming zero. We don't want that. I want it to be on the other side. So we're going to flip those around from min to one, from max to zero. And now if we play around with this, we can decide exactly where it is becoming this type. Let's change the wave amplitude to be a bit more logical. Decrease the frequency because 100 is a lot. It's something like, uh, like this. And now I'm simply going to place it on the microphone. And perhaps we need a little bit less. Let's change the amount of courtesies we got here. We can also decrease the size. And now how can we animate this? Simply using the add right here. Uh, but I do feel like now this is not moving anymore. Well, we can also just animate the end value Shoo, like this. And if we want the waves to continue, we can at the same time animate this value right here. So what I'm going to do is we have this end value, but I can also plug the end value into the add. Now what happens is that it will continuously wave. And as it hits the cardio microphone part, it will continue to wave, but then the wave there gets broken up. Now we might want to use another uh, material than this boring black material that we got right here. Uh, I guess it is material 004. Now we want to change the color because it is just a black color. But what I want to do is have this color be red because it's evil sound. And then this color will be green because it has been canceled. It has been canceled out. So what I'm going to do, initially I thought I could just plug a store named attribute right here uh, between the map range and the set position. And then I found out it really doesn't work like that. Uh, so we have to use a capture attribute right here. Uh, the resample curve can go into the geometry and this output can go into the set position. Now we don't want to use the map range result. For some reason, it is very tough to get a gradient to work like that. Uh, so instead, we are going to use the index right here. But I don't want to plug it in just yet because I want to compare it to another number because we want a very specific type of index. Right over here, I'm going to set this to integer, plug the index into A, and the result right here. Now I'm going to take the output of this result and place it into the group output in an empty socket, this one. So now we have a result right here, which should be named. So I'm going to call it index. Now let's go over to the shader editor. And right now we have a pretty boring black color. So let's just delete that. I will bring in an emission, plug it in there. Now it will become white. And then I'll bring in an attribute node. And I'm going to call it index. Color into the color. Now, as you can see, this index is black. And if we plug a color ramp in between, it will probably increase it. Which means that we have the first index selected. That's great. Now, watch the magic happen. Uh, I'm going to make sure that we add a mixed color node. I will use this factor as the factor. This will be red and the B will be green. Now we want this entire area to be green because the waves are bad and the straight ones are good. So I'm going into the geometry node editor. And once again, we have the indexes and let's just click, 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 all the way until 67 because I already did it and I know the values. 67. So now we have this part that's red and this is green, which means that if we play with this on the end animation, the evil waves are coming in. And then, ah, they are being canceled out, which is also why they are made straight. And now everything is happy. Everybody is happy. <laughs> what a beautiful story. What a beautiful story. I wish I came up with this myself. Anyway, so I'm basically just going into the graph editor. Let's select the empty for the camera, which is this one, a uh, graph editor. And I also want to select the empty of the microphone right here. So now let's click on normalize. Let's have a look at this. All right, so that's Chinese. I don't know what it says, but uh, we can probably figure something out. Uh, I want it to be, let's see, what do we have? All right, yes, that. So I want it to be fast in the beginning. Oof. 
very good. But right here, there should be a moment where it is continuing onwards like this. All right, that looks pretty cool. And then I will select this one. Also make it go fast in the beginning. Oof. That looks nice, but this could be a bit more aggressive. So I'll take all the left handles and move them to the right. Take all the right handles of this one and move them towards this side. And in order to continue that motion, what I'm going to do is go to frame 160, for example, and I will simply rotate our camera. And this will make it a bit easier for us instead of doing the microphone again. Let's go into the graph editor and make sure everything is looking nice. So now let's do the animation of the curves and right here. As soon as it reaches this point, I want the animation to start. So maybe like frame 95, I'm going to set the end value to zero, press I. And I'm going to move the frame, well, perhaps 160. And press I. All right, all right. Let's go over here. T linear. Let's do a transition animation. So click on this, press I, and I'm simply going to uh, maybe scale it in and rotate it weirdly, like so. I don't know, maybe something cool. Let's go into the graph editor. The way to do it, let's also select the scale. Normalize, and then I'll take these handles, these ones, and make sure that it looks like that. Yeah, there we go. Frame 180. Let's see how that flows. 180. Cool, we've got our microphone doing its little thing. So in this tutorial, you learned exactly how to animate a microphone in a very cool manner. We zoomed out of the microphone texture itself, and then we added some sound waves that are canceled out whenever they reach this specific product, because that is a feature of this product. Um, we use geometry nodes in order to make the waves and make it stop color graded using the correct indices. And right now we have a very cool looking animation. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, click on subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.